Hey, by the way, are they playing the Horde, the Orgrimmar soundtrack in the background doing those draft segments, by the way? And then we have a player called Loctar. I am feeling outnumbered <laughs> by Blizzard here. It's definitely some, some beautiful Heroes of the Storm music. <sighs> I am Heroes of the Storm, Warcraft, etc. music. It's always good. And the next map, as we are about to find out, is going to be... Cursed Hollow. How standard we are going today. Oh, yeah. None of the exotic picks that yeah. we are used to seeing in China every now and then, especially Warhead Junction, used to be one of their home turfs. I actually expected to see a little bit more Warhead Junction being picked at the midseason brawl by the Chinese teams. Yeah. Uh, it was quite popular, the first uh, phase. So, we have... 50% win rate by RPG on this map. I only played it twice, apparently, last season. God, that's surprising. Like, Cursed Hollow is just the map that was neglected by China last season. Yeah. So, yeah. So, on the other hand, much like almost every other map, they have a 0% win rate. Exactly. There's still a lot to be seen here in Phase 2, which is completely different from Phase 1 already. We see international picks like Anub and Uther and Genji Bands uh, making it in into China as well. We see teams... Playing a lot more standard compared to Phase 1, where it was basically just all over the place. And uh, that promises to be very exciting. The, are there any mid-season brawl picks that we're yet to see here? I think Arthas maybe, once again, being a little Arthas, bit neglected uh, here. A lot of Terriel. Yeah, um, true. He true. was exceptionally popular. Um, other than that, we've seen most of the heroes. We've seen Genji banned every game, so that's usual. Abatha was also the hero of the oh, entire yeah. tournament, I would Could say. be a good map, Chris Hollow. Yet. One of his uh, excelling battlegrounds. He could be uh, quite the factor here. And yeah. the way Abatha was utilized at the midseason brawl was very impressive. Uh, most of the time you had an explosive melee assassin. In the Illidan, for example, we saw Team yeah. Liquid winning three times in a row against Illidan, uh, against Dignitas on the Illidan. So that might be a factor here for China to consider as well. I had to convince a Hero League teammate that, yes, Genji is an acceptable copy target Okay. Uh, okay. in my Hero League games I agree, yesterday. I agree. That was a... Yes, but they... they I got BM'd for a solid minute uh, in the first part of the game for picking Abathur at all when Genji... Uh, when there was, no, quote-unquote, no valid copy target with Genji and Varian on the team. Yeah, Varian is another hero that you bring up there. They could always make a difference. Uh, we saw a lot of blow-up comms yesterday in NA as well, where you have Lee Ming, Curse Bullet, follow-up as uh, or for a variant taunt, and no target, regardless of how yeah. tanky they are, can withstand so much burst damage. It's just insane. And of course, China, for one of the reasons that is the most experimental with Varian in general. Twin Blades, Colossus Smash, we've seen <laughs> it all, including both of those at mid-season brawl. Yep. Yeah, another hero who we also saw a reasonable amount in the midseason brawl, who we have not seen it come up yet, but was played by both the Chinese teams, Diva Online. Yeah, Diva. I was actually a little bit surprised that Diva was not really a factor anymore as time went by and we entered the semifinals and the grand finals. She was heavily prioritized by some teams in the group stage, like Nomia, for example, and even SPT picked her a lot, in my opinion. So. Are we going to see her pop up a little bit more? I, I know who would be excited about it. Grubby's all over Diva right now. New, new mm -hmm. favorite hero. As would I. My current hero league winner is 100% with Diva. Really? So hell yeah. Are you one yeah. of those filthy Diva pickers? Uh, only in the right situation. Okay, only on okay. the right map. So I, st I only play her when it is when it is suitable. But she's pretty damn good when you okay. play her in you know the right scenario. You know what, Tetra? Give us, give us your best winky face. Winky face? Okay. Unfortunately, I tried. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't. I couldn't see it on your picture on your webcam. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, sorry, the camera froze for a bit. Like, <laughs> so we have Gray Mane and Stitches hook into follow up. Standard is standard. This is our new meta, and I, for one, welcome our new Abomination Overlord. I do too. Stitches is always fun. Stitches always adds a lot of you know. Flashiness, I would say, to the games. When you have those good hooks, the crowd goes wild, the players go ham, and even the casters like it. It's just fantastic. Indeed. I have two... Uh, my t my two favorite tanks in this game are Stitches and ETC. And when yeah. one falls out of favor, the other one almost certainly comes into it, which is always cool to see. Something I really want to see at this point from Chinese teams is the Karazim. I think he was such a good pick. In phase one, I still think that he's perfectly viable, especially with the Stitches comp, for example. You can go for the hook into oh. seven-sided, and already, Tetcher, we see Illidan being deployed. 
Yeah, not even with a Tassadar or anything yet. It's just no. with the Uther on its yeah. own straight away. RPG, no chill. And that means, you know what that means, don't you? Uh, of course, it, it means the hunt. It means the hunt because it's RPG <laughs> and they have no chill. <laughs> As we uh, will likely see, that's good. Split push, it is marvelous to see. 60% uh, of win rate. So uh, would you bat out the Tassadar here? Would you remove it or do you rely on just attempting to bow? Hard to say. Anyway? And that was that's, a, better. Yeah, yeah. I, that's better, I would argue. Yeah, that, that's way better. Not only does Abathur offer um, a lot of steroids for Illidan to benefit from, he's also just so good on Cursed Hollow in general because... Oh, wait, what? what, what? Are, are we going to see a D.Va ban? Did, did we jinx it? Maybe. I would be a reasonable ban here. Yeah. Diva is a very, very reasonable against Illidan. You can split teams up very effectively by dropping that Diva self-destruct. You can separate out the support from the Illidan because Illidan's always going to be dived deep. The rest of the team is always following him. If you just drop Diva on your own team, you force Illidan to either retreat back to his yeah. team or you force him to be out of position and you kill him. She's a great hero against him and of course she is good for getting into that backline to deal with Uther or to try and get to that Li Ming. So very reasonable ban here. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned the, the amount of confusion and the amount of disengage D.Va can provide to her team, especially against hard engaging heroes like Illidan, is just second to none. And also keep in mind, there, there are a couple of fancy combos you can pull off. You hook one, you drop the D.Va mech, the self-destruct in front, and none of their teammates is going to save that guy anymore. So uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming out here from both teams. They're really, they really seem to be knowing each other very well as well, because I'm pretty sure that at some point they scrimmed against each other, and maybe Soa was a team that practiced the D.Va a lot. So RPG just making sure yeah. that none of these shenanigans are going to come out here from everyone's favorite Korean StarCraft II pro player. You know what would be a cool D.Va line if they decided to add more voice lines to Go her? for it. Um, she already has the, is this, are you Bronze League? Mm -hmm. Just just only for the Chinese region or just as a HGC China shout out. Is this Gold League? I like it. <laughs> you know what? The, the uh, are you Bronze League? This, this quote haunts me in my dreams because it's one of my follower notifications. And it miraculously <laughs> pops up whenever I make a misplay on stream. So if, whenever I die a foolish <laughs> death, for example, someone follows in. Are you Bronze League? Clever. <sighs> it's just the worst. So Material coming in. He was one of the heroes we just shouted out, so we see him come in. And Malfurion coming okay. in once again. Still yeah. seems to be popular, even without cleanse. I didn't actually pay as much as a attention as I should have on the Malfurion build we saw last time coming in from WKG. Um, it was fairly fairly usual. Fairly standard, just right? Root instead no of broccoli, cleanse, unfortunately. No cleanse. Yeah, yeah, broccoli is dead long live broccoli. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There is, however, a very interesting level 7 talent which reduces healing whenever targets are rooted. And I could see that being very that powerful. Been the one? Let me check Let me check what the new one's called because I don't know his yeah. talents fully yet. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the thing is, like, if you happen to face an Uther, uh, Uther is all about big healing numbers, big burst heals, right? So if you heal mm. someone, uh, excuse me, if you hook someone and then you drop the entangling roots with the healing reduction, you can deny a lot of burst healing uh, value from That's Uther. what it was. Enemy yep. here is rooted by tangling roots to see 30%. Yeah, it okay. was the root time. There we go. So nice to see. And we do have a Mediv not going for the Tassadar. They're going to get that burst it. protection because hooks. Okay. So RPG is like, so, so you, you guys are trying to go for a pick combo. You guys are trying to kill people. Well, try to kill us. Very Yeah, protection. Yeah. <laughs> Mediv protection. Illidan hard to kill. Gets out very swiftly. Uther, Divine Shield. Guardian of the Ancient Kings. Li Ming, hard to hook as well. I think this is going to be an unkillable team comp for Soa, and they need to think of something magical right now, if, because... If Li Ming took Dominance and Diamond oh. Skin, and Illidan took Metamorphosis, yeah. just invincible team. Oh my god, and they go for the Lunara, and I love it. They they really needed to go for something more sustainy right now. They needed poison damage, sustained damage over time, to possibly counter out the Protector status on... Uh, Varian and uh, Edith. So, is it going to be enough? I remain very skeptical, but I think it's the best thing they could have got. Quite possibly. We will have to see how well this works for them. Like you said, they have ticking damage, which will stay through the protection. I just don't believe it ticks while the protection is activated. That still just protects from all damage. It's going to be pretty tough for them to really break through all of this, but it makes a lot of sense. They already have the anti-healing, so mm -hmm. now with mm -hmm. the extra poison, it's gonna be even tougher 
for RPG to stay alive. But RPG, they have they have so much armor, they have so much protection. It, Uther's not about it's the crazy. huge healing numbers, it's about the armor, and that still affects poison. Yeah, absolutely. It affects poison damage. Good point you bring up there. And if all things go wrong, if the Medivh Shield is not enough, if the Protected Bavarian is not enough, you can still throw down a portal to evacuate <laughs> the the location after a Stitches Hook in the Roots. So there is so much disengage and protection potential on the sides of RPG that I think Zoa is going to have to time their engages perfectly. They need to hook and they need to blow up. Yeah. I think that's their best option and they need for Medivh to not be there because that otherwise that uh that order of events yeah. is not happening gonna be honest i don't feel very confident for Sora in this game by the way titcher do you still have your checklist of phase one of things we want to see was Medivh yes. on it because it. i can't remember if Medivh has been I played in phase I one i did put Medivh on it but i put him down as polybomb Medivh. Huh. maybe you we haven't seen that yet let me check you might be asking for too much there. <laughs> Potentially. Um, what folder did I put that in? Either way, look for his leg. Oh my Why? god, I saw it. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? Well, I'm pretty sure Team Good Guys BKB would call him a fashion god. But uh, we can never unsee it. You know what we can see, though? That's going to be so on the left-hand side in the blue colors. We have Fei Yi on the Malfurion. Uncle G on Turiel. We have Tankovo on the Grey Mane. Spark BZ on the Stitches. And Shy on his cute Lenara. Whereas on the right-hand side, currently 1-0 up in the series, it is going to be RPG. With Chicken playing the Illidan, Wang on the Varian, Tsar on Uther, Infinity on the Medivh, and Loktar is on the uh, Blair. Mind completely blank there on the Li Ming. Yeah. I just completely derped. All good. All good, my boy. <laughs> so, Wang, as you said, he's going to be the main tank once again, and Chicken... Man, Chicken, he has been a playmaker for RPG in Phase 1. He continues to impress me. Uh, strong Dehaka performance last game. I am scared to see what kind of Illidan he can unleash. And some eye, we will see what he is able to do. But now, Tank, who refuses to play Tank, is going to be clearing <laughs> up the minion wave a bit. Very aggressively, actually. Yep. Playing quite far forward. It's a Moonburn now Furion as well. I like it. So... The amount of wave clear you get upon completing uh, the Moonburn quest is actually outstanding. And it also helps you against bosses and mercenaries in the course of the game. So especially in the later stage of the game, if they happen to defend against a boss or a double boss play even, uh, the Moonburn can do surprising amounts of work. So I like it. I actually think it's probably the best level one talent these days. Unless you happen to play against the Stitches yourselves, then of course the vision by scouting drones can really thwart their plans to hook someone. Indeed, in this case, they are the ones playing the Stitches, so it is not a huge yep. deal for them. Li Ming, who is against the Stitches, is playing the Pulsar, but, and why is that portal behind that wall? Infinity pulling uh, back, he's poisoned! Uh, protection, 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 <laughs> protection, protection! He's fine anyway. Good. Yeah, that was a weird portal location here for Infinity. He took the Healing Fountain, and that was a mistake as well. That's something I keep highlighting on my stream as well. If you're so low early on, do not take the healing fountain because by the time the first tribute spawns, you're not going to have a fallback possibility. Yeah. You're not going to be I able to heal. I think he was scared that he was yeah. going to die. I think so too. So, in that case, it was fine. But normally, as a general tip, don't waste your healing fountains too early, especially on maps where the first tribute or the first map objective in general can be so important. Very. But yeah, true. you're right. So he, he used it to save his life. I probably shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, he, I don't so think much. he needed to. I think a protection would have been enough to save mm -hmm. him. But at least he committed to that to try and save himself. So all good. Yeah. Find the, found the list, finally. Um, yes, Medivh Polybomb is on there. <laughs> Polybomb is on there. Nice. Are we going to see it? I mean, technically speaking, they, they don't really have those wombo combos to follow up on a Leyline Seal, right? Normally, we see a lot of yeah. Diablo with Apocalypse in the mix. Maybe a Zagara and Maw. But uh, I actually, it's still... I actually have to, I have to update this list. Um, um, yep. I have to remove Ariel Revive I like from E-Star during, during uh, Season Brawl. Oh, that was uh, good. 
It was very good. It was very effective. Oh no. Uh, oh I'm no. Not count oh, he's fine, oh. baby. Unless the boys are fresh. Hello, Dan. No. Oh, just too slow for the portal instead of using friend or foe to get to Sar. I like it. And looks like Medivh is going to be fine for now. He probably used another shield to prevent the poison from ticking. And uh, now Wang is the one to feel the pain, though. Varian on the retreat. Not something we see all day because normally he likes to get to the thick of things and just tank as much damage as possible. In the meantime, though, that Siege Shine camp in the top lane getting a lot of value. Medivh already using his Raven form to get there in time, but Medivh doesn't have the strongest wave clear, so a tower or two might be falling after all. Indeed, that might take a while for him to deal with. Stitches, by the way, going with the Amplified Healing, so he is going mm -hmm. for what is almost certainly going to be Tenderizer and Fishing yeah. Hook later on, because if you can't win in a close-up team fight, you make sure that that fight is happening as far away from the rest of the enemy team as possible. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense to go tanky here as well. I mean, if Turiel was around you all the time with the Sanctification potentially, with the Shields from Righteousness, you might still be fine, but against Li Ming in particular, who is able to deal so much burst damage, you better want to be safe than sorry. This could also tell you that he might be going for Judgment, and right. look at Li Ming, locked her going in for the first blood. Yeah, um, very, very wrecked there. That was oh, quite absolutely. Brutal. As we do see, so uh, Tyrael going for the extra movement speed after his teleport. So potential for judgment, because then you can use that as an escape once you have engaged in. We'll see if that does work out in yeah. this way. As everyone is going to be hitting at level 7s, so we're seeing Spark getting focused down, but he's nice. fine. Nice jump by Illidan to get to freedom. Look at Li Ming, by the way. She did go for dominance, and that is a very... A uh, clever way to build her, in my opinion, because the enemy team is all about focusing one down after a hook, right? A lot of explosive burst damage, so you might need to to rely on every source of self-healing you can muster, and as such, I think the dominance level 4 was a very smart choice. There is that tenderizer coming in from Stitches, so yep. like we said, full hook build here. We're seeing an attempt at the grab coming in. Oh. Nice interrupt by Varian. Only barely this time as Varian is getting focused down, even with Shield Wall. Oh. No one is in range to interrupt oh. here. The tribute does go over to Soa as we do see Varian dropping very low, but the portal is still taking poison. There we yeah. go. Gets the health and he's able to survive. Keep in mind, though, that this was a 4 versus 5. Chicken on the Illidan didn't join the fight at all. Instead, he lingered in the middle lane. He tried to get a little bit more soak and XP uh, pushing done. Wasn't really that successful in it because, as you can see, global XP is actually favoring Soa. So, not only do they have more XP, they also secure themselves the first two tributes. So, Soa currently setting sail to dominate this early game. Uncle G making it out alive. Whew, that was a close one, though. Yeah, RPG, three heroes too many, and about two minutes too late to do their best CE impression, taking a boss still reasonably early, yep. uh, but now it's the time. Response in kind by Soa. Medivh does see it. He's just <laughs> going to portal away after distracting Lunara a bit. Yeah. She's Starting chasing, though. Boss capture. She <laughs> is chasing. He's going very deep. It doesn't want to go too far. Both teams will get bosses fairly unabated. It was just slight scouting and slight harassment. Hey, 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 did you see that mount on the Illidan? I think he was yeah, using the new surfboard. surfboard. Oh, it's so cool. HTC accounts, dude. The stuff's in the game. It's just not currently available Did, for buying. Were they able it. to it use it on the mid-season brawl? Were, were they able to use it at the mid-season brawl too? I didn't see anyone. I uh, no, because it's uh, it was on Malfield patch at this point. Ah, so cool to see yeah, a live in action. In the boxes, I believe. Cool. Um, so we will see if we see a Tychus, I believe that means we might see his uh, his water skin. Sweet. Seeing Infinity once again getting focused down. Illidan being a good distraction in the background. Nice. So they're focusing onto Uncle G, who's able to teleport away, but it's oh, going to be no. who's killed off. I don't know if he had full master's touch yet. No, I'm I'm pretty sure he didn't have them because it's still way too early in the game. So rip stacks for now. That's gonna delay his power spike quite a bit. And Illidan falling. Wang on the retreat. It looks like Varian cannot sustain himself through that one. And that is the worst timing. They're going for the keep right away with the boss. Yeah, they're heading straight. Oh in. no! Bosses on the way, they ignore the wall completely. Go straight for the straight for the keep. And this is great for Soa. They have level 10. Level 10 is on the way for RPG, but with Varian still dead for five seconds, this keep is 100% dead. Yeah, this is a gone keep. The boss, unfortunately, has been damaged a lot already on its way to the keep, so I don't think they can de uh, they can demolish the core just yet. In fact, they were going to retreat. Illidan defending the middle, but so much value done after 7 minutes and 40 seconds on the side of Soa. The big underdog that nobody really expected to do well this phase because they looked so shaky during phase 1. But so far, this comp, this Ditches comp with Illidan seems to be doing tons of work. 
Now both teams with heroics. Taunt, Leylight Seal, Hunt, Disintegrate, and Divine Shield for RPG. So we'll go for the throat, Sanctification, the Putrid yep. Bile, Leaping Strike, and Twilight Dream. Now oh, Illidan with the hunt though. He can now join the fight from a large distance, which allows him to do some solo soaking, potentially even out the uh, deficit that they currently suffer from. We also have Leyline Seal. We've got everything available that they need in order to initiate strong team fights. Leyline Seal taking out a couple people to hunt, locking someone down here as well. We also see Disintegrate for the Li Ming. Okay, here goes the hook. Medivh not fully stacked on the Master Touch, but here goes the fight. Nadeev jumping back and forth throughout the fight from in the back line to the front oh, line. Oh, huge! Seal catching so many people to the Divine Shield, keeping into that alive for the moment. He has to retreat. Nadeev getting focused down. He gets taken out again. And even with that incredible Leyline Seal, RPG were not able to get the execution. Wow. That, that was such a good Leyline Seal. But you know what? So it just doesn't take the damages. They've got the... They, they didn't even use a Sanctification. They still have it ready. And they might use it now to secure further kills. Uther trying to escape, Guard of the Ancient Kings, oh, not enough no. to keep him alive, Leaping Strike, there goes another one, and that is going to be only Varian surviving here, and Soa, absolutely destructive play, it is Varian and Medieval the defense, Illidan continuing to do Illidan things in the top lane, <laughs> while he waits for his team to come back. Yeah, Illidan was like, eh, I'm not going to join that one, I'm going to betray <laughs> you for now, guys, you know, I, I've got better things to do, I want to get those juicy minions, those are foes I can handle at this stage of the game, but... Enemy team, so what? A little bit too scary. And I can't really blame them. Oh. They didn't have 13. Yeah. Oh, look at that board, though. And it was a very good board. Interesting talent from uh, from Stitches at level 13. Yeah. Without any other synergy for <laughs> it, he still goes for the extra arc on his slam. A little bit yeah. weird. I would personally prefer Fleabag when you Fleabag, are against exactly. Uber, to Get that extra cooldown reduction for your hooks, for, every, yeah. for your devour, keep yourself sustained. But no, in this case... Extra slam radius. Oh. Sure, I guess it's good for scouting. Hunt comes in. The gank is perfect. Oh, and they take out Greymane. A sign of life. A sign of hope here for RPG. They can now take this tribute with a numbers advantage. Stitches and needs to get one. out of here ASAP and uses... Oh! That's the hook, but no, it's no, no. Varian protected. Armor protected. Armor. He is oh. invincible. As they drop the ley line, can they make something out of this? Varian wants more, but only drops harassment. As Super they solid. back up. Varian, by the way, went for Warbringer. Yeah, he did oh, sorry, go, uh, the juggernaut. juggernaut. Yeah, he did yeah. go for the Juggernaut, and that's a talent we normally don't get to see that often. However, the thought process behind it is probably that there's a lot of high HP targets on the side of Soa. Uh, most, first and foremost, the Stitches, the Terial, and even the Greymid becomes quite tanky in the late game. So they want to deal a little bit of more percent percentage damage. Still, I don't yeah. like this choice though, because keep in mind that not only oh, never mind, hold that thought for later. Another team fight is about to break out. Greymane just surviving. They want to try and get Stitches. They can't do it because Stitches land a hook. Almost, but Chicken just out of range. They're all in retreat now. Material not done yet. They want to try and get My Wang. God. Do they have the portal? They use the portal, but they're still yeah. chasing. Locked on gets slowed by the Eldarin's might. Where is the protection from beneath to keep everyone alive? Looks like it might not be needed. Oh, Lunar is going 15. in. 15 hook. It's onto Wang. Divine shield to keep alive. Wang moving forward with the protection. Disintegrate to try and delay. Locked on being moved onto by Stitches. Running out of places to run to. Me seeing Wang will finally oh. drop down after saving the rest of his team via being a distraction but he's yeah. portaling out only varian dies as a as a very familiar perfect sacrifice there to save the rest of his allies stop it right now and i'm gonna continue to cast solo here don't you dare <laughs> mock my boy there he gave his life for a good cause he saved no, his that teammates was good. there we he go he did he it was absolute that was 100 percent <laughs> honest he gave a he gave his life for his good. teammates there by moving back in delaying in time for them to escape no way ling ming would have got out if he hadn't yeah, done that exactly so a noble sacrifice here for varian really protecting his teammates keep in mind though this boss we all know the term throw pit Keep in mind, there's a ley line seal available. You can steal bosses with that. They go ham the right now. They're trying to interrupt Illidan, Tyrael, so that he can't sanctification onto the so point. Nice. But they so can't nice. get everyone else wow. on the point. Sanctification is dropped. They pull back. They try to Oops, go through the portal, but Medivh still dies. Yeah. No stacks. We haven't seen the notification of the Master's Touch being complete. He died yet again. Was a worthy try. It was a good try. Was it needed, though? I think it was, because... 
the boss would have definitely been the nail in the coffin here. The bottom lane already naked, and I don't think they can stop yet another assault by Soa. This time around, Chicken feels the pain. Shy, though. Oh! Oh, nice dominance value. Yeah. Exactly. Comes in, but Lee Ming is completely oom as Illidan attempts to delay. The boss is on full hit Can points. They do it's it? going to be a four versus four. Can RPG defend? Oh, this is going to be so close. Their Kalaris top priority. To right yeah. now. Their top priority should be the boss. So the boss is hammering at the core. The shields are down. They try to wipe Soa right here, right now, but they can't chase too far. They bought themselves some time. They have to turn around and focus yep. the boss. They use the portal to get back over to it as quick as possible as the core begins to drop 74% as the boss is focused down. It's getting taken out. And the well core done. down to about 50% and by the time the boss okay. is dead. But RPG still alive here thanks to that Lunara kill. Yep. Now, can they keep themselves alive? This tribute doesn't matter to them. They need to spend some time clearing the bot lane. Okay, so... Nice defense by RPG. They could have definitely lost the game if they hadn't played that perfectly. They did play it perfectly, and they stay in the game for now. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get the curse with a third tribute. Uh, Soa's rotation was just in time. Now, Infinity, he's scouting the enemy team. He knows <laughs> where they're going to be at, and that is, of course, the most annoying feeling when you happen to play yep. against Medivh. And look at the XP Tetcher. Those kills basically closed the gap almost entirely. Yeah. So, also, no fishing hook. Stitch is taking yeah. the slowing slam as well. He is just going for the synergy with the Unfair Advantage. No, wait, no, they didn't take it. It's just yeah. the level 13. So, yeah, he's gone for... I don't get this build. It's more <laughs> CC, it's more slows, but I don't get it. I would have much preferred fishing <laughs> hook to try and get a snipe. Me too. Yeah, also, Lunara, as you said, not going for unfair advantage. The spice oh, is just going for Peter Bell. Go. Oh, nice disengage. Good. Sanctification, keeping him alive. Leyline is dropped, grabs everyone except Lunara, but they're not following up. They're instead trying to use it as what? an escape. The hook just missing. Millimeters. Wang. As they go through the portal, leaping strike still lands on the chicken, though, in terms of damage. Protection on the variant, trying to keep him alive as Uther. The body blocks are not The body blocks try to hold him, but he's wow. still from so low. But <laughs> RPG oh, careful, Lockta. RPG survive. <laughs> They survive, but boy, was that close. The amount of damages Lunara puts out, even without having unfair advantage at level 13, is just incredible. And we mentioned how good that sustained poison damage can be against those Medivh shields, the variant protection, yep. because it just continues to tick anyway. It's just so good. And they, on the other hand, won't die either. So has got so much protection with the Turial, the mouth, the roots, the stitches yeah. being a tanky mofo in the first place anyway. It's just crazy. Chat brings up an excellent point, something I completely missed. Executioner on Greymane, so they have at least one piece of synergy with yep. all these slows, so that's fair enough. That's enough to justify. As we see them move in, they're able to grab up this Bruiser Cam, put some more pressure onto the mid lane. Bot lane, currently a decent amount of minions in it. RPG can leave that alone for at least a little while, spend some time out on the rest of the map. Yeah, and now the game's... Like, now the game gets really exciting. Both teams at the verge of getting a curse. I think it would be disastrous for RPG if Soa took it. So, who's gonna pull the trigger first? Who's gonna initiate first? Who goes all in first? Every move could be the game deciding one right now. Turtle's getting engaged upon. They're trying to focus him down before he can Oh, they strike. get him! They get him! Wow! No sanctification this time. They need to split to avoid... Oh! The still get hit. That's a lot of damage as they turn it around. Protection being dropped. Silence is onto the Uther. Li Ming. Turn around. Li Ming barely alive. She can get a kill. She can remain in this fight. In the meantime, they oh. try to kill off Malfurion. Li Ming, they get the kill of Malfurion. And that's such. Li Ming gets the dominance. Never lucky. Look at Greyman. Oh, He's going to be the next one to fall. <laughs> they're, oh, they're buddies in real life, but in the Nexus, this is where the friendship stops. Yeah. Varian Please says no. Nope. <laughs> he bought Down time he at goes. least. Yeah. He and that is, the there is a curse dropped by RPG there, but all their lanes are so pushed wow. up, they can't really wow. capitalize on this. They instead need to use these to get this fort in the mid lane, maybe the one in bot lane, and get themselves to level 20, as that will be their opportunity to try yeah. and come back into this game. Careful, Sar. Jesus Christ, that's a lot uh -oh. of damage. They turn it round with the benediction nice. stunned, but Li Ming not able to get the damage off, and Lunara able to leave to Freeman. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 
comeback mechanics have been activated in this game and RPG took the lead in overall XP. They defended the side lanes against the Mercenary Onslaught. They are now the ones pushing, they are now the ones in the driver's seat. However, Soa is back as 5 in 5 seconds when Rayman pops up again. Now, there is a boss available and this is the winning condition for yeah. Soa. If they get this boss after 17 minutes, 18 minutes, it's game over. However, RPG, they know about it. They know exactly what their biggest menace could be and Mediv is scouting accordingly. Speaking of that, off in the distance, a faint voice is heard. Feel the hate for it as Illidan <laughs> is taking down the top boss. Yeah. He has Hunt available. That's he can so come huge. join his teams. All they need to do is to keep Infinity with that vision, keeping an eye on everything, while Chicken is uh, actually losing to what? the boss. Careful, Chicken. Oh, he's just going to abandon it. All right, Chicken. Okay. Well done. Looked good for Let a moment. Uh, portal, portal, this might be a problem. Portal, portal, portal. He's there so low, he can't even join the fight. <laughs> yeah. He like can, he's he's going for a bruiser cap instead. Yeah, I think that's that's something he can accomplish. But even now, look at that. He's below fifty percent. If he joins the fight right now, give it up. He has to come. Oh my god, this is so close. It's like a like a poker game. Who loses and shows their cards first? Like check it. He's fine doing these caps. This is fine. Oh. He's just getting distracted by all yeah. of this. He needs to make sure he's in yeah. range for hunt. Boss gets leashed though. That's huge. Oh, and he does see that. So now that could finish <laughs> off this bruiser cap. Exactly. They go for the blind hook. They anticipated that maybe someone would be hiding in there. And now, so of course, they see the mercenary camp was taken at the top half of the map. And they're going to be face palming. They're going to be like, oh my god, Illidan wasn't even there. We could have easily started a fight, maybe, if we were more determined. Portals dropped, oh. but Zara is now so <sighs> separated from his team. Dodges the hook. That's a start. Illidan coming in, not using the hunt yet. Just trying to make sure he's near his team. Protection. Here we go. Dropped. Here he comes. Going for Greymane. Sanctification is available for when they need it as they begin to move in. Holy ground separating uh. out Illidan from the rest of the team as they move into the back line. Greymane focus down and will get finished off before the sank. Oh my god, that was so close for Soa. The Sanctification being popped one millisecond too late here in order to save the Greyman. They should have used it earlier so Greyman could have actually retreated into it. But look at RPG. They're all so low from the poison damage coming in by Lunara. And once again, they won a teamfight, but they can seem to capitalize on the victory. They're they can't. They're oh. so low. They need to go back and get health. In the meantime, though, Medivh, who's still at half health, is able to stay yeah. and continue to scout the boss until he needs to be back. And he does do that. He scouts in in human form while being back to base. So everyone is going to be healthy. As level 20 is available, we have the extra hunt range coming in for Illidan. Nice. Tal Rasha coming in for Li Ming. The extra divide shield, right? That's yeah, the that is the, the upgraded one, Nuts. yes. Yeah, cool. I haven't Those seen that one in a very long time. And you know what? I, I actually like it. Same. Uh, this is the first talent I ever made a huge mistake on by not reading patch notes. Due to the fact that I was getting focused super hard on Uther one day, decided to pick the Divine Shield that I bought <laughs> still Divine Shielded me as well. When I Divine Shielded an ally, turns out I just made my ally super invincible. We won the game anyway. Hooray. As we see Wang picking up the tribute. And the 20 second cooldown reduction is actually a big deal as well, uh, especially against such a pick heavy comp like Soa has. But back to that team fight, I think Soa could have. Okay, never mind. They're not letting Kendrick talk. Let's go for another team fight initiated by RPG. Hook onto Illidan, and that oh, no. was Lunara super out of position. She jumped to Illidan, but Illidan dived to his ally, and Lunara gets picked off. This is a disaster for Soa. Slight mistiming, sanctification not available as Tyrael is dropped. Perfect timing for RPG. This is exactly what they needed. They're going to try to get this boss ASAP because it is still the greatest threat to their core. So by them taking it, they take away a big winning condition here. A silence on Uther gets more protection though. Oh, uh, nice. So yeah. Nice. But yeah, back to that one team fight. I think it all came down to Uncle G not dropping that sanctification in time to save the Greyman. Because even if Greyman wasn't in the vicinity, he could have still dropped it. And Greyman, instead of running away from Illidan, could have moved towards Tyrael and survived. So uh, yeah, just a little bit off timing here. But what is RPG going to do now? They're trying to defend their other lanes. The mercenary camp would have been a serious threat for the keep in the middle. And they try to go yeah. for double boss play, also denying the curse for Soa. Good call. They could not push with that boss due to the fact that Uther, despite being engaged upon early earlier, also stood in the boss stun and the boss route, so yeah. had to go back for health. Yeah. They're able to pick up the tribute though, making themselves one away from a curse. They're gonna get this boss too. Absolutely nothing so I can do about that. RPG taking over the entire oh. map at this point. And we can see uh, that Medivh is two stacks off from reaching the master's oh, touch after geez. 23 minutes. 
to, uh, so yeah, it's a little bit rough. It took him a little bit longer, but eventually he's gonna get there. And uh, if they end up winning the game, nobody's going to remember it anyway. Now, the boss has been disposed of. No keeps were taken as a result. They go for the double boss play, and they're not 20 yet, so that is. They need to soak every inch of minion waves they can find. But in also killing those mercy. Oh, they could get the curse now, though. Ah, wow, that's interesting. Do they go with the boss, or do they ignore the curse? We will see. They hover around. Looks like they're leaving the boss, but that means Illidan's able to do it. He has the extra range. He's basically global at this point. Yep. As Varian holds down the front line for the moment. No portals. So try to be careful. And fully stacked. Good nice. Oh, yeah. As they move in, trying to take down Ludara, who leaps to try and disengage. Sanctification is dropped. Ludara is nowhere near as they try to turn around. Leilai catches three. They move on the stitches to try and blow him up, but he biles backwards. Oh and my now Wang oh barely escaping through the portal. Thanks to Protected. One hook is all they need. Varian is close to dying. Illidan isn't looking too good anymore. So there's a lot of potential. Even Medivh below 50% health. So one hook is all they need to snowball from there. They're really protecting this Greyman. Look at that. They're using their bodies to intercept all these skill shots, but it was not enough. One of those arcane missiles came through. Good hook. But can they do it so? Are they taking so? Oh no, Greyman! He's being completely oh, turned on. Varian no. tanking everyone else in the back line, getting healed up, getting the armor. Illidan distracting Malfurion as they immediately turn on to Ludara, who gets destroyed. Wow. Medivh actually solo chasing onto Malfurion oh. here, denied by stitches. That will get Malfurion out of there, but the boss has gone yep. through top keep. The tribute gonna be picked oh. up. That's gonna be a curse. That's still a boss, and that will yep. likely be game. That will likely be in game. Greyman just lost his temper there. He went full beast mode a little bit too early after taking a full combo by Li Ming. Five arcane missiles and one arcane orb. Magic missiles, excuse me. Was just too much for him to withstand. Even in Worgen form, 10 armor hashtag was not enough. And unfortunately, Soa is about to lose game number two after an insane back and forth. So kudos to the winners. Kudos to RPG. But man, did Soa put up a fight. They really did, and this has a lot of hope for Soa coming into the rest of the season. Very nicely played by them, and RPG, honestly, we said that we had hopes for them, but yeah. if they played like they did in the early st uh, half of that last game in the rest of the season, then I don't think they're going to do any better than they did last year. They need to yeah. recenter themselves, and they need to refocus. We need to see that hunger that we saw from them last season return. Yeah, so uh, they stepped it up so tremendously. In this series, they looked better than during the entire Phase 1 from HTC China. So kudos to them, but RPG, as you said, despite winning this series 2-0, they looked extremely shaky in the first half of the game. And if they want to truly rival the top tier spots like CE, SPT, and E-Star, they need to step it up even more. Indeed they are. So a reminder, guys, that it's not so much best of three in China. It is a two-game set round double round robin format yep. where basically each team's play each other twice and you get points depending on your score. A 1-1 one, one is worth one point, a 2-0 is worth three points. And the winner, the teams that go to the Eastern Clash and potentially after that BlizzCon are the teams with the most points. Now then, we have four games a day. We've just had two of them.